All right, in this uh, lesson, so this is grade six, unit one, lesson two. And in this lesson, students are going to be finding area and recognizing that area can be decomposed and rearranged and put back together. And that original area, if we cut it up and, and move it around, even though it looks different, is actually still the same area. So let's get started. And we're gonna begin with a nice little warm up. And the idea is students are gonna be looking at each of these four figures. And uh, we want them to talk about which figures uh, have squares uh, that could be used to find the area of the shape, all right? And so as students are thinking, and we, and we want students to uh, really think critically, and, but this is a warm up. So um, there's a low floor, high ceiling opportunity. Uh, we, we want students to think about, okay, so A. A is definitely something that we could use to find the area because we can see all of these equal size squares. We could see some partial squares right here. And so this is a figure in that could be used to find the area. Let's look at B. Well, I'm gonna scoop down to D and D is another easy one, right? Where it's easy to see all these individual squares allows us to find the area of the um, trapezoid, and we could see that A and D, pretty straightforward, they both use squares, they both have fractional squares. They would give a different answer, that's because we're talking about large unit squares up here versus small unit squares down here. Students might make an argument for B, that we could use this to find the area of the square, uh, of the trapezoid, if students somehow account for the fact that we have different units. We have large unit squares here, but we have small unit squares here. If students acknowledge that somehow they have to account for the fact that these are small units versus these are big units, uh, that's cool. So a student can definitely make an argument for B, but we definitely want students to recognize that in the case of C, we have some overlaps right here. We have some gaps. And in both cases, we want to avoid overlaps and gaps. So that's the big point of that warm up. We're going to move into that, the activity, the main thing. And in this case, the directions start by saying your teacher will give you one square and some small, medium, and large rectang uh, triangles. Uh, I'm going to, however, I'm going to use GeoGebra on this. So I'm going to switch over because I love digital whenever I can. So I'm going to switch over to digital and then here we are. And I'm going to scroll down and here's what it's going to look like right here. And the idea is uh, GeoGebra is this wonderful open source app that allows students to uh, manipulate things digitally, right? It's just a digital version. And what we see is this kind of looks like a a tangram, kind of a modified tangram, because we don't have the, the classic parallelogram here. That parallelogram has been, looks like it's been broken up into a couple of triangles instead. Uh, so, you know, first give some time for students to play with this applet. They can recognize that they can move things around by clicking on it. And that circle uh, says that that circle thing allows us to rotate our objects and we can stack them on top of each other and we can move things around. All right, so give students an opportunity to play with that GeoGebra applet for a, a moment first. And the first thing, um, it says, notice that we can put together two small triangles to make a square. Uh, what is the area of the square com uh, composed of, uh, what is the area of the square composed of two small triangles? Be prepared to explain your reasoning. So the idea is we want students to recognize that they can take a small, triangle, rotate it, whoa, rotate it and move it. And look at that. It looks like it's going to make a square. Woohoo! Now students might not see this as a square. They might call it a diamond, but it is indeed a square, right? You could just, because it's just a square rotated a little bit, 
so that it looks like a diamond, but it's still a square, all right? So we want students in this case to use this square as our unit of measure. So this is one square unit. So if this is one square unit, now question two says use your shapes to create a new shape with the area of one square unit. So we could take our, our two little um, triangles and I could take these original two triangles here that were the same as a square right there, well, bam. And I could rotate and I could say, I don't know, let's make, I can make any shape I want, boom. Now the question is, what is this new area? Well, this new area is still a one square unit. It's just the same, it's the same kind of uh, amount, just rearranged in a different, look at that. You can even kind of see how if we were to move this over here, wha-bam, there it is. So we could see that, all right? Um, so the area of this new shape is still one square unit. Now question three, use your shapes to create a new shape with an area of two square units. All right, so I could take, I don't know, I could take these two, and I know that these two equals one square unit, so I could just kind of put it anywhere I want, can I? So let's, let's put that there. Ooh, hey, wait, 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 wait. Ooh, look at this. I can move this down here. Uh-oh, what do I have? Kind of looks like I might have a, a large triangle. This is kind of fun. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so cool. Look at that. So we could see that four triangles, four blue triangles equals a green, which is equal to two square units. Oh, that's kind of cool. All right, so I'm going to let you answer the rest of the questions. This is kind of a really fun, wow, this is kind of a fun uh, fun activity. And it says it's going to take about 25 minutes. And sure enough, I think that would take 25 minutes just to learn the technology and play and, and experience. The point of this is to help students recognize that uh, a shape that has a given area will still have that same area even if you rearrange it and make it look different, all right? So this still has an area of two, because that had an area of two, so this has an area of two. We just rearranged the shape a little bit. All right, so going back to our, so we get to skip all this because we talked about all this. And then um, here's an optional activity. Uh, we're not gonna talk about it, because it's it's optional but teachers man if it take 15 minutes and play it's basically right here go back to the digital here it is and and um, oh that's student response I want to get back to where am I where am I where am I where am I right that's the composing I want to get back to the ah here it is the optional activity and the idea is let students play with their uh <clears throat> those trapezoids that that the you know the pieces the not trapezoids triangles and and play in, in a different way it's optional uh but it's you know it's it's worth it because this is kind of fun and for some kiddos they they just may dig that okay so now we're going to get back to our summary our lesson summary is that idea of recognizing that when you have a particular area in this case it's two square units you can rearrange those pieces to make a different shape but still have the same area all right you can take them you can cut them and rearrange them and that's how you get the same same area but a different shape and that's the big lesson for today so taking a look at our practice problems uh, let's see, it says the, diamond of a rec uh, the diagonal of a rectangle is shown. Decompose the rectangle along the diagonal and recompose the two pieces to make a different shape. And then how does the area of this new shape compare with the original? So let's zoom in here and we can make one triangle, make a two, another triangle, and it says we're supposed to decompose it and rearrange it so that um, we make a different shape. So I'll put, I don't know, I'll put that there. I'll put this here, wha-bam. So how do these two areas compare? Well, these two areas compare by saying, hey, they both have the exact same area. They have the same area. This looks like it has an area of six square units. 
So that means this has an area of six square units. Of course, was this the only way to arrange these two triangles? No, we, students could have done anything they wanted. Moving to question two, it says the area of this square is one square unit. So two small triangles can be put together to make a square, but it could also be put together to make a medium triangle. All right. So what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to figure out which of the following figures has an area of one and a half square units. So we are told that that small triangle equals a half. How do we know that it equals a half? Because we're told that these two triangles, I mean, uh, two smalls equals a, a square. And then that's how we see it, right? So each of those small little triangles equals a half. And so I see a half square unit, half square unit, half square unit. So definitely A is equal to one and a half. Now, if A is equal to one and a half, automatically B is equal to one and a half because it's the same three triangles just rearranged into a different shape. We know that C is equal to one and a half. How do we know that? Well, we know it's equal to one and a half because we're told up here that these two small triangles can be f f uh, fit together to make a square or fit together to make a medium triangle. So here's our medium triangle, which has an area of one square unit. And there's our one half square unit. So there's our one and a half. And D, D is the loser. And how do we know D is the loser? Well, because it's got an area of a square, and we know that's an area of one square unit. And then it's got two small triangles, and that's a half plus a half, which is another one. So that's an area of two. So we know that D is the loser. All right, so let's get clean that up a little bit. So Priya decomposed a square into 16 smaller equal size squares. There we go. And then she cut out four of them and kind of attached them and made this shape. So basically, we're told she took this shape and she rearranged it to make this shape. And so the question is, um, how do these areas compare? And so we have these four choices, and we are supposed to select, I guess, select all that, com that, uh, that apply. All right, and so it says the area of the new figure is greater. Well, that's not true, because the area is all the blue pieces. And we have 16 blue pieces on the left, uh, right here. And we have 16 blue pieces on the right. So the areas are the same. So the two figures have the same area. So we definitely know it's B. That's a true statement. The area of the original square is greater. That's not true because they have the same area. 16 over here, 16 over here. And then we don't know because there's no nice cute little formula. That's not true. So the answer is B. So a uh, little bit of review, the area of the rectangle playground is 78 square meters. So we're gonna draw a picture of that rectangular playground right here. There's our rectangular playground. It says if the length of the playground is 13, what is its width? So if the length is 13 meters, what is its width? And I'm gonna put, I don't know, X right here. So we have to do we do have to remember that the area is the square units on the inside. And we know that if we took 13 and multiplied by x, we should get 78. Using a little bit of logic, we know that that missing value is 6. So my picture doesn't make sense. Uh, because I drew 13 right here, and we now know that x is 6, so my longer length is 6. So the picture doesn't make sense. But I was using that to help me make sense of the problem. So the missing length is 6 meters. Really, I should put 6 meters. And then our last question. The student said we can't find the area of the shaded region because the shape has many different measurements instead of just the length and the width, like problem 4. All right, uh, explain why the students 
uh, statement about this area is incorrect. Well, come on, we need to know that we can take a shape and we could cut it up into smaller pieces that make sense. And now suddenly we do have areas that we can find, uh, regions that we can find the area of, and we can add them together, and that's how we would get our answer. So uh, that's how we know that that's cor incorrect, that thinking is incorrect. All right, so as we wrap this up, the point of this lesson is to help students understand that area is still the same. Once you have the area, you can decompose it, cut it up, move it around and rearrange, and you still have the same area as long as you haven't, uh, you know, like thrown away any of the pieces uh, as you're doing the rearranging. So that's uh, grade six, unit one, lesson two.